Hello everybody, my name is Curtis J, and welcome back to Fire Emblem Three Houses. So we're gonna get right into it and accept the quest from Lady Rhea. I assume you are already aware that you will be teaching here at the Officers Academy, correct? To start, please speak with the three house leaders. You should also take a look around the Academy and acquaint yourself with your new home. That is your first task here at the Monastery. Please let me know if you accept it. Once you have finished, come and speak with me. May I ask a favor of you? Okay, so I'll speak to the three house leaders. Okay. I'm accepted the quest. Okay. Alright, so welcome back. I have been wanting to play this, but I needed to get... Oh, I needed to get um, the box battle for the Forest Temple of Twilight Princess out of the way so I could easily just jump into this. So the mini map. Okay. Alright, so I already know which house I'm going to pick. I'll tell you which, why and which house I'm going to pick when it gets to that point. So. Okay. Also, my controller is acting up. I'm having so you've accepted problems. a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Hressbalk. I am the princess and heir apparent of the Adrestian Empire. I wonder if you'll be tasked with leading the Black Eagles. I hope you've had a chance to meet everyone. Would you like to know more about any of the Black Eagles? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, let's start at the very bottom. To the west of Fodlan is an archipelago called Bridget. Petra is the granddaughter of their king. Bridget is a vassal state of the Empire, which is how she came to be enrolled here. She's incredibly smart and studious. Alright, so that's Petra. Few commoners have joined the Black Eagle House, but Dorothea is an exception. She's a songstress from a famous opera company in the Empire. I'm not entirely sure what brought her to the Officers Academy. Alright. She's Count Varley's only daughter. I suppose you could say she's a bit eccentric, but she seems like a gentle soul. I believe she shut herself away in her quarters and doesn't care to leave, but don't worry. I'll make sure she finds her way to class. Yeah, stay in school, go to class, do all your homework. Alright. He's the second son of Count Burgley's. He has no inheritance in his future, which is perhaps why he's always so eager to prove himself. He's overly energetic and rushes headfirst into any battle. If he ends up in your care, be sure to keep a close eye on him. Okay, funny story. I was watching an HMK live stream the other day. Um, he was, like, streaming, like, the game, the opening light of Gamescom, and he was playing this game before, um, the show started, and he had Kaspar on his team, and oh my gosh, he sucks. He's remarkably intelligent, but he only wishes to apply himself to tasks that particularly interest him, and nothing else. He's also fond of, well, napping. Okay. If he had any work ethic or sense of duty to speak of, I suppose he would be destined to become an official of the Empire. Okay. Sorry. For some reason, he thinks of me as a bitter rival and is always trying to challenge me. It's terribly irritating. His house is that of Duke Iyer, which produces Adrestia's prime ministers. That family is... perhaps too pleased with its own status. Okay. Hubert is the heir of Marquis Vestra. He has served me since I was a child. You may think his blood runs a bit cold, but 
Actually, that's rather accurate. Still, if you can get past that, you'll see he's quite astute and reasonable. I don't like him. He creeps me out. The way, like, the camera panned, like, during when he first got here, it, he was so creepy. I don't like him. Me? Well, some think I'm a bit distant. Arrogant, even. But there's little to be done. One day, I must rise to become Adrestia's next emperor. Okay. What else? Well, it seems to me that we may have similar personalities. Alright, those are the Black Eagles. Okay. Okay, let's... Hi. Go ahead and head outside. Pardon me. Wrong way. What do you think? <laughs> All right, so we've discovered a new area. This is where we'll find all the students. Yeah. Oh, there's Claude. Well, well, scored a teaching gig here, did you? Talk about a great first impression. I guess that means I'd better introduce myself properly. I'm Claude Von Regan. I'm from the ruling house of the Leicester Alliance, but don't worry too much about all that madness. I'm guessing you don't know which class you'll be teaching yet, do you? I bet you'd like ours. We're not as difficult as the other two. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more about anyone? Sure. All right, starting again from the bottom. Leone enrolled because she wants to be a mercenary. I think she said that her father is a hunter. She's pretty blunt and as stingy as they come. A habitual saver, too. I think she's hoping to repay her village for helping to send her here. Okay. Hilda is the only daughter of Duke Goneril. It seems her father and brother coddle her quite a bit. If you look up lazy in the dictionary, her picture won't be there because she never got around to submitting it. Not too unusual for a noble, I guess. All right. Marianne is Margrave Edmund's daughter, and that's pretty much all I know about her. She doesn't interact much with other students. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of folks here have never even heard her speak. Okay. Lysithia is the daughter of Count Ordelia, and is probably the youngest student here. But watch out, she gets angry if you treat her like a child. As for me, I do it on purpose. You have to make your own fun in this place, you know? I guess so. He's the second son of a merchant family. Since his brother will inherit the business, he's training to become a knight. If you ask me, it doesn't seem like he truly wants to be a knight. He's probably just doing it to please his parents. Don't children do a lot of things to please their parents? He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died in an accident. Seems like he's had a rough life. Despite all that, he's just about the most cheerful guy you'll ever meet. His passions are training, eating, and actually, that's about it. <laughs> that's funny. He's the heir of Gloucester territory. If you haven't already picked up on it, he's a bit arrogant and fancies himself a ladies' man. With that haircut? That said, deep down, he's really devoted and honest. Though I wouldn't mind never hearing him talk about his noble obligations ever again. And last but not least... <laughs> Piqued your interest, have I? As luck would have it, I'm pretty curious about you as well. But what's life without a bit of mystery? Let's just spend the next year or so learning about each other little by little. Alright, those are the golden deers. Alright. so. And then Dimitri is all the way over here. Please accept my apologies for the other day. You came to our aid, yet I hadn't even the courtesy to properly introduce myself. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, 
Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Of course, at the Academy, I am simply a student. And I've heard word that you are to become a professor here. Delightful news. I still have much to learn, but I'm confident I could benefit greatly from your guidance. In any case, welcome to the monastery. I hear you're investigating the different houses here. Did any of the Blue Lions catch your attention? Mm hmm Alright, back at the bottom again. Ingrid is Count Galatea's daughter. She is also a childhood friend of Felix, Sylvain, and myself. She is diligent, industrious, and principled. In truth, she is more knightly than most knights you will ever meet. Okay, so she's pretty cool. Annette is Baron Dominic's niece. She is a talented student who scored extremely high marks at the Royal School of Sorcery. Okay, she's so she's cheerful gonna use magic? and hardworking. Brilliant, really. Though, she can be a bit oblivious at times. I hear she caused an explosion in the kitchen last night. <laughs> Probably looking for something to eat, maybe? I hear she was born to Imperial nobility, but a twist of fate brought her to the kingdom. She may seem carefree on the surface, but she's actually a kind soul who pays careful attention to everyone around her. Okay, so she's gonna be like the healer for the blue lions? What? Sylvain is the heir to House Gautier. He is a capable person who highly values his friends. That said... Well, he's always been a bit of a... <clears throat> skirt chaser, so to speak. Pardon my bluntness. I speak with him about it often, but it doesn't seem to help. He's a skirt chaser, okay. He's the adoptive son of Lord Lenato of Castle Gaspar, but I hear he was born a commoner. He has an extremely earnest personality, so I'm certain he will approach your lectures with great enthusiasm. Okay, so he's pretty studious. And he's actually really cute too. Look at those freckles, oh my goodness. Felix is the heir to House Fraldarius. He has a bit of a sharp tongue, but don't let that fool you. Deep down, he's a good guy. He gravitates toward people who are skilled. Perhaps you would enjoy a friendly competition with him sometime. Maybe. Dudu was born in Dusker, and has been loyally working in my service for the past four years. Dudu. <laughs> he's rather taciturn, but once you get to know him, You'll see he's a kind and good-natured young man. I can't get over his name. That's funny. Me? Oh, um... Please forgive me. It's difficult to open up on the spot, don't you think? You're not wrong. It is... hard to open up to someone you just met. I'm afraid my story has not been a pleasant one. I do hope that doesn't color your view of me. But I understand if that can't be helped. You're not wrong. I I appreciate your effort. All right. That does that finishes that quest, and there goes my controller. Uh, we'll continue exploring for a little bit. Okay, first, I need to go get a different controller, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm finally back after, like, a day. Because my con I couldn't find a char my spare charger for my pro controller, and it was dead. So, I had to use my console, char my console power cord to charge it. So, I'm definitely going to be buying a new cord and a new freaking controller, because... This one keeps having drift problems, and it's freaking annoying. So what we're gonna do, since we've talked to everyone, we're going to talk to a couple of the people in so each of the houses. So you're the mercenary who saved Claude, are you? Oh, you are? It's such an honor to meet you. Ignaz Victor. My parents are Alliance merchants. And I am Lysithia von Ordelia. Please do not forget it. 
Okay. What do you think? Hey, are you that mercenary? Everyone's been talking about you. I'm Hilda Valentine Goneril, and her name is... M Marian Van Edmund. Are you joining the Knights of Saros or something? Well, I look forward to seeing more of you. No, we're your new teacher. Well, I don't know what makes us qualified. Okay. Are you someone's guest? The dining hall's that way, if that's what you're looking for. No, Raphael. That's Captain Gerald's kid. Hi, I'm Leonie Pinelli, Captain Gerald's first and greatest apprentice. I'm sure he's told you about me. Nice to meet you. I'm Raphael Kirsten. Who are you again? <laughs> she just told you who we were, and we're your new... Um, I'm your new yeah. teacher. Okay. okay, let's go talk to a few of the well, blue well, lions soon. It must be my lucky day today, being approached by such a beauty. I'm Sylvain Jose Gautier. Feel free to say hi whenever you like. My thanks. Hi there. You must be the one everyone's talking about. I'm Ash. Great to meet you. This here is Dudu. He serves Prince Dimitri. I have heard that you rescued his highness. Words cannot express my gratitude. Oh, it's not Dudude, it's Dudu. Okay. I'm sorry. Should you ever require my strength, please know that I will hasten to repay this debt. Okay. I have heard all about what you did from Prince Dimitri. As a citizen of Fargus, I thank you. He also said you're quite skilled. And he doesn't just say things like that. I look forward to sparring with you and beating you. Felix, must you always speak of fighting right away? Oh, and uh, you may call me Ingrid. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I like both of those characters. And who's this? You don't look familiar at all. Do you work here at the monastery? Oh, mercy. Do you think this is that mercenary people have been talking about? Now that I think about it, that does sound like something Dimitri may have said. I suppose you'll be enrolling at the Officers' Academy too, then? Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Mercedes, and this is my best friend. I'm Annette. It's nice to meet you. I'm enrolled in a way. Okay, did I... Is that everybody? Ah. Probably not, but... Alright, so we're gonna talk to some of the Red Lion students. Ah! What? I don't talk to strangers! Bernadetta, this is no stranger. Our house leader owes this person a great debt. Is that not right? I am Ferdinand von Eyre, legitimate son of the Eyre family, the Empire's foremost house. Are you going to join our class? I look forward to getting better acquainted with you. Uh, all these, like, I like oh, some no. of the characters from each of the houses, but you can here? only pick one house, and um, I don't know, I Dorothea. think you could have, I like, different academy, units, a and you can, an like, company in the Empire. You should hear me sing sometime. I'm sorry, I talked over her, I'm sorry. Uh, I think you can have, like, different, like, units, like, from different, from each of the houses, so. Is it true that you saved Edelgard? That's incredible. The name's Caspar, by the way. Pleased to meet you. Linhard, goodbye. Sheesh, <laughs> Linhard. How'd you get into the academy with those manners? So, are you a student here too? Maybe we'll be in the same class. <laughs> Thank you. I don't want to talk to him. He's so creepy. I am Hubert, a humble servant of Lady Edelgard. I heard you came to the aid of Her Highness. You have my most sincere thanks. He has the creepiest voice. I don't like him at all. This is Petra. She has come all the way from Brigid to study in the Empire. Back on her archipelago, she is actually a princess. In Fodlin terms, she would be called heir to the throne. Hello. I am called Petra. I am pleased to be meeting with... Uh, no, uh, I am pleased to have met you. Okay. Hey. Okay, now that we've talked to everybody, we're gonna yes. go back 
to... Hold on. You there! Go to the second floor. Okay. That's. Uh... I'm not ready to. Yes. Decide yet, even though I already know which one I'm going to pick. Let's see. I'm real busy, so could you please move along now? Thanks. Okay, now, what else did Lady Rhea need doing today? Excuse me, rude. Okay, Sedeth's office, okay. There's our father. Here I am again, the office of the Captain of the Knights. That said, I'm merely here to assist. Apparently, the current Captain is getting on in years. I hear the captain has a hard time keeping up with the responsibilities of the job. Ah, oh, that's where I come in. So he doesn't get to do any of the fighting. Let's see. Bummer. He's like a receptionist. I don't like her, but she creeps me out. Hello, Professor. Dropping by so soon? Are you ill? This is the infirmary, you know. If you're ever wounded or sick, do feel free to drop by. Or if you would like a nice cup of tea. Would you? Well, some other time. I don't like her. She's hitting on... I don't know. She... What's that? I left invested the crest analyzer. What crest could this be? Okay. This is my research laboratory. I've worked hard to furnish it with the rare materials and purpose-built equipment required for my work. Okay. All right. I guess that means we go back to the audience chamber. Yes. We are done. How are you enjoying your time at the Academy thus far? I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. But it is as the Archbishop desires. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. All so different. I hope you've made it a point to get to know each of them. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of the remaining two houses. A house for the Dresden Empire, many are nobility, and most of them use magic. A house for students from the Kingdom of Fargaris, most value chivalry and excel in military arts. A house for students from the Le Leicester Alliance. As per regional tradition, many are skilled archers. Okay, they're not going to do me very good. And I don't want to use a lot of magic. But I have picked the Blue Lions because if you remember when we had to select each of the leader's names we got to learn like so like they said like something about him and he'd like he had a darkness about him and like also he like he when he was talking about himself he said that his story isn't a pleasant one and honestly i just like this cast of characters like the supporting characters much better so we are going to go with the blue lions so you have chosen the Blue Lions led by Dimitri, correct? Yes, ma'am. Your heart has made its choice, then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. 
brother? Oh, I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. I am in the middle of something, Flame. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officer's Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. His little sister is so cute. Wait, does this mean our new professor is... No, I really can't believe it. But I was speaking to you so casually, as though we were companions. Oh, I am so sorry, Professor. You just look the same age as the rest of us, and... Oh, and, and I'm sorry I just said that, too. I really must watch my tongue. I don't mind if you treat me as a friend. Uh, you say that, but... I just don't know about all of this. I'll admit, it doesn't sit well with me, either. After all, we wish to show you due respect. Sure, but... If the Professor says it's okay, shouldn't that be enough? That is, if your highness can consent to such a thing. After all, we're already speaking this way to our future king, so we may as well relax our speech with our professor too, right? Well, we're not in the kingdom, so it only goes to follow that we should all speak companionably. <sighs> I concede. If the professor says it's fine, we ought to accept that kindness gratefully. As for me, I'm not sure I can manage. You don't have to force yourself if it's too difficult. You're fine with that too, right, Professor? Such benevolence is a sight to behold. I don't suppose you would care to join me for tea. We could discuss education? And marriage? <laughs> Control yourself, Sylvain. I have more important matters to discuss with our new Professor. Come to the training ground later. There, you will show me what you're capable of. You aren't wasting any time, are you, Felix? As it were, count me in for any such battle. <laughs> Pardon me, but I would also love to observe you in battle for future reference, if that's okay with you. Ash, I won't have you speak of merely watching. You should join us as well. <laughs> if you get injured, simply say the word and I'll patch you up straight away. Your Highness. Do take care not to go overboard. You worry too much to do. I'll be fine, I promise. My companions, is there not something inherently wrong with crossing blades as a way to bond with each other? Huh, I never thought of it that way. Well, if that's how you feel, I suppose you'll just stay behind while the rest of us are at the training ground? Ingrid, my dearest friend, you really are too harsh on me. Well then, Professor, what do you think? As you can see, the Blue Lion House is a lively bunch, but you'll find none who work harder. I'm certain we'll cause our fair share of trouble, but I'm very much looking forward to the year ahead. I'm excited. Okay, are we about to go into like a battle? I'm excited. So there's going to be like a mock battle between the three houses. That'll be pretty cool. All right, I'm going to have to end this soon because we're already at the half an hour mark and this video is already This video is already longer Say, than it needs to while be. While you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything, about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. Crests are a fascinating topic. 
But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. Would you believe I have a crest? I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. So is that what happened when I looked at it earlier before I chose my house? Is that a crest? As I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest, and you just happened to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Do, you, what, do what you can to find out. I'm curious. Yes, of course. I'll get to the bottom of it straight away. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. What is this? I do have a crest. A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrilling! <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm, what could this line here be indicating? Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps... What in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. With each moon, professors of the Officers' Academy receive a schedule for the month ahead. It notes the days on which events and missions will take place that month. Pay careful attention to your schedule, so that you may thoughtfully plan what you intend to do each month, and when. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, I guess... That's what we get to do. You schedule... Okay. Explore. Yes. So this is my room. I thought it heard a girl voice, girl's voice, but it must have been imagining things. Alright. That is going to end this episode off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And subscribe for more of this. And don't forget to hit that bell so you'll be notified when I upload. And thank you guys so much for watching.